What are you? Pastor Alex, your mic is muted. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Greetings to you all in the sweet and precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is coming very, very soon. It's uh, another privilege to be in the presence of God, to learn the word of God uh, together as a family, bought by the precious blood of Jesus, anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, led by the guidance of God and rooted in the word of God. Hallelujah. And uh, I just want to lift my hands and bless each and every one of you. Your family shall be blessed. Your children shall be blessed. Your businesses, your jobs, and all that you do shall be blessed. Amen. And God will bless us abundantly yeah. and abundantly and abundantly. And our prayer is that God's word will be, will be rooted in God's word. And we will bear fruit for the Lord in the sixth year of our journey. Hallelujah. That we all will be rooted and we'll have the same spirit of God. And we'll be matured by the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Amen. Let's continue with our studies and uh, share this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now, uh, this week, we are going to start from uh, chapter four of First John. I, I hope you were able to <clears throat> take a little time to read and meditate upon God's word. Uh, it is so important when we come together to learn God's word that uh, uh, if you could take time to meditate upon that beautiful chapter so that we can, we, we will all be on the same page to understand God's word. If you have not taken time, if you didn't get time to read uh, the chapter four of first John, uh, as usual, we will start reading the scripture portion. Uh, today's scripture portion, uh, what we are taking to meditate is uh, from first John chapter four, uh, we'll start from verses one to six, and we will finish reading the entire scripture so that uh, uh, entire chapter so that uh, we will understand what we're going to learn this uh, evening. So I request Brother Stanley to unmute and uh, please start reading uh, the scripture, please. Yeah. Uh, so your screen sharing is stopped. Yeah, yeah, just uh, your screen. Oh, yes. Can you see it, brother? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, we'll start from <laughs> verses 1, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 onwards. Brother Stanley, over to you. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. 1 John <clears throat> chapter 4, verses uh, 1 to 6. Uh, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listen to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Verses 7 to 21, please. Yeah, go ahead. Dear please. friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. <clears throat> Everyone who, love, who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into this world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. 
he gives us of his he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that father has sent his son to be the savior of the world if anyone acknowledges that jesus is the son of god god lives in them and they in god and so we know and rely on the love god has for us god is love whoever lives in love lives in god and god in them this is how love is made complete uh, among us so th uh, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like jesus there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made perfect in love we love because he first loved us whoever claims to love god yet hates his brother or sister is a liar for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love god whom they have not seen and he has given us the command anyone who loves god must also love their brother and sister thank you so much brother stanley for reading the scripture god bless you uh, we have made it a practice to read the entire chapter because uh, reading this chapter listening to god's word i believe it's a blessing and we never know uh, how breakthroughs and and deliverance would come to our family to us so therefore it is always a blessing to read god's word and listen to god's word amen chapter 4 we have two or three very important verses that we have memorized from chapter 4 this is a very powerful chapter of course yes all the chapters were so powerful even then these words these chapters can come and contain some of the very important verses that we know verses 4 you dear children are from god and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world now this is one word that we all have memorized and uh, we use this words to encourage people so therefore people if you have not come across these verses please memorize this word the gospel of, i mean uh, first john chapter 4 verses 4 4 verses 4 is a very powerful word why do i say this because these are the verses where we can use for evangelism these are the verses where we you when use for uh strengthening other brothers and sisters who are already in Christ these are the verses we can use for testifying about the spirit of god which dwells in us so this is a words of confirmation that we can memorize these words are very powerful so kindly take time to memorize this powerful word first john chapter 4 verses 4 and the next very powerful word is this god is love god is love it's not the other way love is not god but the bible beautifully says god is love there are different kinds of love which we can find in greek in in greek uh, languages so therefore we need to be so specific to say it is not love which is god but god is always love so that's where we need to be very careful there are different kinds of love we cannot say all the different kinds of love is god no but god is love god is love and the fourth and the third important thing that i want to highlight this evening from this chapter why do i highlight because these are the verses which we're not going to meditate uh, today or in the coming days these are the you know the key scriptures which i just want to remind you so that you can uh, meditate upon them and memorize these verses and the third important word is this in this world we are like jesus so this is another important scripture that we need to understand you know apostle john says in this world we are like jesus verses 17 is a very powerful word so when we understand the scriptures apostle john says imitate the light which has been given to you imitate or radiate the light which has been given to us and that's why apostle john says in this world we are like jesus and uh, there are other beautiful verses from this chapter but the today or in this coming days we're going to concentrate on three very important concept 
from this chapter. Number one, this chapter talks about this one word. This is how we know. This is how we know. So we're going to learn about this. This is a self-examination, examining uh, chapter. The entire first John chapter one, two, three, four, and five. This is a self-examining, examining chapters altogether. This book helps us to examine few things. And one of the important thing is, this is how we know. This is how we know. And I will come to that a little later. And the second thing is, Apostle John says, discern the spirit or test the spirit. Do not, little children, do not believe every spirit. Verses five, do not believe every spirit. And he says, you need to test the spirit. You need to test the spirit. And the second important thing that we're going to learn is, discerning the different kinds of spirit which we find in the word of God. I believe this is so important because once we understand the different kinds of spirits which has been mentioned in the word of God, we will understand whether any among these things, is there any spirit that, that really hurts me or when I, am I bound by any of these spirits? Once we know what kind of disturbance that we are going through, or we can use the scriptures to pray for someone else, maybe our neighbors, maybe someone in the family, maybe some of, my, of our brothers and sisters or friends who are being bound by certain kinds of spirits. Once we understand these things, we can pray for them because this is where we're going to understand the difference between using our authority. What can lose or what can break us from these kinds of spirits? Where do I use my authority? So this is very important thing that we're going to learn from this scripture. And the third is the person and spirit of Antichrist. We're not going to learn who this Antichrist is, but we're going to learn the nature of the Antichrist, the person and the spirit of Antichrist. So these are the three things that we're going to learn, if God willing, in uh, this uh, chapter, in this chapter. You know, we use this Tuesday for an in-depth Bible study. Uh, preaching is good. We do that on, on some Fridays, sorry, on Sundays we do it because the people who come to the church will be of different, uh, different attire. So we do preaching there. But in Tuesdays, we do an in-depth Bible study so that we need to understand what is what and what is not. Therefore, be in a prayerful attitude, brothers and sisters, and let's join together and let us learn God's word. The first thing we need to learn is this. Uh, the first thing what we're going to learn is this is how we know. This is how we know. You know, we finished chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and uh, we are in chapter four. And probably in the coming days, chapter five, God willing. But there is one thing that runs through these chapters. I don't know whether you noticed or not. This is what I have noticed that run through these chapters. What is this? The one word is this. This is how we know. This is how we know. And when Apostle John says this word, the question what we need to ask to ourselves is this. How do we know? How do we know? So people of God, we need to understand. Now, this is one of the questions that we have, we have all asked in our life. I still remember when I, when, I mean, in my initial journey of being saved, this was my regular question to my pastor. This was my regular question to my spiritual brothers and, and sisters, my friends, any pastor who would come. This is what I would ask. Pastor, how do I know that I'm saved? Because, you know, any pastor, any preacher, any convention is there. We used to go. And in every convention, the pastor would say, if there is anyone who wants to accept Jesus Christ, lift up your hands and come forward. So it was, a, it was a pattern that most of the conventions, we just go and stand there. But because the question is, we never knew how I was saved or how a person is saved, how a person is born again. So the question is this, 
how do we know how do i know certain things in life how do i know that that i am in god how do i know that i am healed how do i know that this is the scripture for me how do i know my calling how do i know what do i choose so these are very powerful questions that we all have we all have asked in some time or the other in our spiritual journey and even today we keep on asking certain things how do i know how do i know so apostle john in his first first episode first john has mentioned six things i've just brought only six things and the question is is how do i know and apostle john says this is how we know this is how we know the first thing is this how do i know that we are in him the first question that we find in chapter 2 i'm just you know summarizing the entire chapter from chapter 2 he says the first question is how do i know that we are in christ jesus in simple term how do we know that we are in him in him means in christ jesus let me read this verse of scriptures to you so that we will understand what we are learning First John chapter two verses three to six, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whosoever say I know him but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, the love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Now this is how Apostle John. confirms this is how we know that we are in him so people of god the answer is there in the previous verses so if you have any question we may be coming from different denominations we may be coming from different beliefs and belief systems but i'm not pinpointing anyone or judging anybody we all have gone through this situation how do i know that i am in in god in christ now apostle john says this is how we know this is a mirror so this epistle is a powerful epistle which is becoming a mirror when you stand before it we will know oh this is how i look this is where i need to be corrected this is where things have to go away this is where things have to come in so this is a powerful mirror before us the epistle of john first john and this is how we know the answer is this the first thing what apostle john says by keeping his commandments we know we are in him very quickly we have been repeating all these things that's why i'm not stopping here i'm just reading very quickly into it how do i know that we are in him first thing when i keep the lord's commandments i know that i am in him what are the commandments of of the scripture repentance we need to repent everybody must repent for what they have done so that is the first commandment the second is baptism when we repent and confess when we believe in jesus we need to be baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and when i take baptism i know that i am in him and the life of separation we say this word together that i am though i am in this world i'm not of this world i'm not of the system of this world though i need to live along with this but i have a separated life which is in christ jesus we heard the word of god couple of weeks ago and last week also that we need to live a separated life then i know that i am in him fellowship with the saints of god then we know that we are in him having communion i mean participating the holy communion prayer and meditation then we know that we are in him the second thing is by living jesus lived as jesus lived you know i mean complete obedience of course we are we are really you know developing in that we are maturing in that area to be complete be, be obedient to god's word to obey the voice of god we are maturing into it and one day we will mature for sure amen humbleness as jesus humbled himself we need to have that character in us humbleness loving and mission oriented lifestyle is what you know we need and when we have these things we know that we are in him these are not to be explained because we have done it many many times so one thing i want to tell you is this 
the first portion of this chapter four talks about this is how I know that I am in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And the second thing, how do I know who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil? How do I know? Today, we, it is so confusing to know who is the child of God and who is the child of the devil, who is not the child of God. And Apostle John says, this is how we know. This is how we know. This is the powerful answers for very profound questions that we carry within our heart. That is taken from 1 John chapter, chapter 3, verses 10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister is not of God. They are of the children of the devil. So very simply put, John, Apostle John beautifully says, this is how we know the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. The first thing is by the love of God that is bestowed upon us, we know that I'm a child of God. Are you really confused by thinking, am I really a child of God? I go to the church, I share my testimony, I read the scriptures, I do a lot of things, but still this confusion is there. Am I really a child of God? Because there are certain things that doesn't leave me. I'm still stuck in it. Am I still a child of God? This evening, my dear brother and sister, we need to understand by the bestowed love of God upon us, we get to know, this is how we know that we are a child of God. By abiding in Jesus Christ, we know that I'm a child of God. By displaying Christian conduct, we know that we are the children of God. Abiding in love, we know we are the children of God. Amen. If there is a question which is in your heart this evening, the Lord says, God has chosen us, not we. It is a powerful word. I have not chosen God because Jesus said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you so that you will go forth, bring forth the fruit that will withstand forever. Amen. So therefore, how do I know when the best, when the love of God is bestowed upon us and abiding in Christ, displaying Christian conduct and abiding in love, a person comes to know that with that he or she is a child of God. Amen. So I pray in the name of Jesus, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't allow the devil to disturb and confuse your heart. Declare in the name of Jesus, I am a child of God. If you believe it, lift up your hands and be going to declare in the mighty name of Jesus this evening, I am a child of God because he chose me. God chose me to become his child or children. Amen. And the third, how this is how we know is this. How do we know who has the right spirit? This is very, very tricky. This is very, very important. In the last days, we need to know, especially Apostle John says, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. You need to test them. You need to test them. And this question is this, how do we know who has the right spirit of God? And Apostle John says, this is how we know. Wow. What is it? What is it? How is it? First John chapter four, verses two and three. This is how we recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But, the, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard and is coming and even now already in the world. Listen to me, people of God, very carefully. If we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and he is the son of God, I want to tell you, we have the right spirit. We have the right spirit. How many of you can boldly say, now according to the word of God, I have the right spirit because I believe from my heart that Jesus Christ is born in the flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ was born in the flesh of the virgin. 
and he is the son of God and he is God. When we acknowledge that, 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 that truth, the Bible says anyone who does it has the right spirit, has the right spirit. You know very well, there is a group of people who did not, who do not acknowledge that even today. I don't want to mention that group and the word of God says, and the spirit of antichrist rejects this, this belief. The spirit of antichrist rejects this belief. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is born in the flesh. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. They believe that Jesus Christ is only a prophet. They believe that, you know, I mean, certain things. So how do I know that I have the right spirit? One thing we need to understand is this. He who acknowledged Jesus Christ is born in the flesh. My question is, is do you believe that Jesus Christ is born in the flesh? Jesus Christ was born in the flesh. And I would say amen to it. Amen. Jesus Christ as God. He is God himself. Jesus Christ as the son of God. Jesus Christ as the Messiah. We know there is a certain group who do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We need to pray for these people. Jesus Christ as the only savior of the world. So sad to know, so sad to hear. Few people say that Jesus Christ is one among the savior of the world. No, but the Bible clearly says that Jesus Christ is the only savior of the world who can save men from sin and death. Amen. If you believe that the spirit, you have the right spirit of God in you. Jesus Christ died. He was born. He died and he was buried and he rose again on the third day. If you believe that with your heart, you shall not only be saved, you have the right spirit in you. We have the right spirit in us and believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, we have the right spirit in us. Amen. People of God, don't be confused. Sometimes listening to philosophies, sometimes listening to different kinds of teachings, sometimes listening to I mean, different kinds of ethical teachings or different religious teachings and whatever it is. Please do not have a speck of doubt that Jesus Christ was not in the flesh or he was not the son of God. He was not the son of man. He was not God. He was not the Messiah. What did tell you? We will not have the right spirit within us. But this evening, if there is a speck of doubt within our hearts that has rejected, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus this evening and say, I believe. We believe that Jesus Christ was born in the flesh. Amen. Let's say in the name of Jesus, we believe that Jesus Christ is God. Let's say that Jesus Christ is a son of God. Let us say that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He's the only savior of the world. He's born, dead, buried, and he was risen again on the third day. And we believe that he will come again. I want to tell you, this faith brings us the right spirit within us. And Apostle John says, this is how we know who has the right spirit. If you come across anyone who says that he is not God, even Christian religious people out there, there is a certain group who does not believe that Jesus Christ is God. He is being created. If you come across certain people this evening, take this word in the name of Jesus and tell them, no, we have the right spirit and the spirit which is in you who does not believe that Jesus Christ is God or the son of God need to be questioned. Speak the right spirit to them in Jesus name and God will do the rest. Amen. And the fourth one is this. This is how we know. What is that? How do we know God's love? What is the power of God's love? And John says, Apostle John says, this is how we know the power of God's love. First John chapter four, verses nine. This is how God showed his love among us. How? We all know that God loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But what is the magnitude of God's love? What is the length, the breadth, the height, the width, and the depth of God's love? What is it? What is it? And Apostle John says, this is how we know. This is how to know the length, 
the breadth, the depth, and, 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 and the magnitude of God's love. How is it? He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Hallelujah. People of God, this is the magnitude of God's love. We were destined to die and perish in the sinful world with our sinful nature. But God sent his one and the one, only begotten son that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, he says, since God so loved us, we all also have to love one another. Not, no one has ever seen God. Very clearly said, no one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. How do I know that the length and the magnitude of God's love? One, we know it when God sent his only begotten son and helping us to live through him by loving us first, by God living in us. God living in us. I don't want to remind you about the background of First John. I mentioned it very powerfully. Why did Apostle John write this episode? Because of the Gnostic leaders and teachings. They do not believe in this body, which is as, as a holy temple. But Apostle John confirms this. No, this body is not sinful when God lives in us. And Gnostic says it is impossible for God to live in this in the sinful body. This is material. God cannot live. But Apostle John says, no, God can live in this body because this body becomes a temple of the most holy God. And uh, how they always is possible because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary and, and the belief that we have in the sacrifice of Jesus, this body becomes the temple of God. And we know this is how God lives in us. This is the magnitude, the height, the breadth, the depth and the length of God's love. This is how we know that God's love is so great. And the fifth one is, this is how we know, what is it? How is love made complete? How is love made complete? This is a very difficult question. And Apostle John says, no, 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 no. This is how we know that, that love is made complete among us. Very strange questions, people of God. You know, it was a developing theology. Even during those days, they were having a lot of questions. How is love completed among us? And Apostle John says like this, no one has ever seen God. But if you love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. His love is made complete in us. When his love is made complete in us, the love which we have to love one another is also made complete through us. We need to give space. We need to synchronize with the work of God. When God comes into our lives, it's not only for salvation and for prosperity or anything else, not only for that. One of the important things why God dwells in us is this, that his love will be made complete in us. When we synchronize and work with that great work, the word of God says that love that we need to share to our brothers and sisters will be made complete. I don't know whether you understood this powerful, powerful word of God. So why is there envy between us? Why is there hatred between brothers and sisters and families and within the church? The one problem what Apostle John says is, you do not, we do not cooperate with the work of God, which is happening within us. What is the work of God when he comes into us? Beyond salvation, beyond healing, beyond, uh, you, know, you know, great joy, beyond all these things, I believe. The work of God is that his love will be made complete within us. Why? So that we, 
our mission to love others will be complete without that it will be partial we will be struggling we will be struggling there will be enmity within the churches there will be enmity within the families and, and everything will be incomplete how can we complete make love complete is allowing god to work in our lives amen people of god this evening may the holy spirit open our spiritual eyes amen being in christ jesus loving one another when god lives in us his love is made complete so this evening if there is a, an enmity between anyone among us if there is enmity within within our children our families our in-laws our pastors our brothers within the churches within pastors or within the elders within within anyone you know within the neighbors within within our friends in the circle in the in the job circle in the colleges wherever if there is enmity which is still lingering here and there this evening we need to say in the name of jesus i'm going to work allow god to work to complete his love complete in me first when i join with the mission of god i want to tell you the love that i should give to others of loving my brothers and sisters when we say brothers and sisters it not only our our immediate brother it, it is it is a you know it is a common terminology for the entire church and the world so this is why apostle john says we are like jesus in this world how is it possible when we cooperate with the mission that god began in us i want to tell you that one great mission is this he wants his love to be complete in us when we are filled with god's love is it is easy to give to others when my fridge is filled with food all i need to do is open the fridge and and just take it out and serve when the fridge when the storage is empty how can i open and i open what will be left nothing will be left so therefore let god fill this body cleanse this body not only from sin let god fill this body with his divine love so when we are filled with divine love we can give that love to our brothers and sisters i want to tell you there will be great joy there will be great unity psalm 133 will be powerful will be powerful behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity we need to start from there let us pray this evening lord I'm going to give my life for you to work so that you will complete your, your, your love in my life. I can just serve that love to others. Amen. And the last thing and uh, the sixth thing is, this is how we know. What is it? How do we know that we love one another? How do we know that we love one another? This is the last chapter of First uh, John chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of god and everyone who loves the father loves his child as well this is how we know that we love the children of god how do i know how do i love how do i know that i love one another this is how we know that we love the children of god by loving god and carrying out his commandments again and again and again apostle john has only one song that song is this love god love one another complete or fulfill the commandments of god carry out his commandments i want to tell you this is the powerful gospel i know when can we fulfill that gospel is this allow god to work in our lives and and be obedient to god's commandments and the rest he will do the healing will happen by itself we are from god and whosoever knows god lists to us listens to us but whosoever is not from god does not listen to us this is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood people of god this evening i think we need to uh, i can just take uh, we can just go one one more thing that is uh, the next thing we'll go and and we we will we will we will end the session with with prayer and we will learn more in the next class amen people of god how do i know the first thing is this let me just rewind it again how do we know that we are in him 
How do we know? This is how we know. Amen. By keeping his commandments, by living as Jesus lived. How do we know that we are the children of God? Who is the children of God and who is not the children of God? This is how we know. By the love of God bestowed upon us, abiding in love and Jesus displaying the Christian conduct. How do we know that we have the right spirit? How do I know that I have the right spirit? He who acknowledged Jesus and all these things, we know we have the right spirit. And the fourth thing is, how do I know God's love? What is the magnitude of God's love? This is how I know that God sent his only begotten son for me. And the fifth one, how is love made complete? When I make God to complete his love in me, I can make the love which is in me to be completed that I need to give to the people. And the sixth one is this. How do I know that we love one another? And he says like this, by loving the unseen God. It starts by like this. We all can love we can believe things we can see. But one big challenge, what Apostle John says like this, love the unseen God, the God whom you cannot see. If you cannot love the God whom, if you cannot love a brethren whom you see, how can you love a God that you cannot see? That's how we find it. And Apostle John says, how do I love one another? Let me believe and love the God whom I cannot see by obeying his commandments once again, by serving and helping one another in time of need, by interceding for one another in prayer in time of their need. People of God, please spend time for intercession. When, when your pastor sends a prayer request, we are from different churches who have joined here for the Bible study. Your pastors in your church will send some prayer requests. Please spend time to intercede and pray for you, for, for that brothers or sisters. Just pray because this is how we know we love one another. Helping, we are people who help, who wants to help. But if you are unable to help, you can pray, you can pray. But please, whenever possible, please help somebody. It need not be, may not be your, your inner circle or within the families of your church. It can be your neighbor who a person who does not know God. If we extend our helping hands, I want to tell you, we love one another. We love one another. And the love of God is in us. Amen. So the first session is this. This is how we know. Very powerful questions. Six powerful questions and six powerful answers for these questions is been given by Apostle John in his letter. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. And the second very important thing is this, dear friends, dear children. Another translation says, dear children, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. But he says, test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many, many false prophets are gone out into the world. So therefore, this is what we're going to concentrate maybe next week. How can I test spirits, different kinds of spirits? If we know, this is very powerful people of God, please come with a prayerful attitude and pray for us also that we can learn this powerful thing together. How to test the spirits. This is where I love, you know, I remember my school days of biology and chemistry labs, where a salt will be in chemistry lab, where a salt will be given, and we need to identify what kind of salt. Don't ask me whether you like chemistry or not, but that's a big story altogether. If a salt is given, you know, it all looks the same. It all looked the same. And teacher would say, you know, choose one of the paper and, and uh, salt number four. What kind of salt is it? We cannot taste it, but you need to mix something. If you're not familiar with what to mix with it, you will not understand what kind of salt that is. In the same way, if we do not know the different kinds of spirits which is in the word of God, mentioned in the word of God, 
we will not be able to test the spirits that we come across. There are more than, more than 10 to 15 kind of spirits which has been mentioned in the Bible. So we will go through those things in the next section, amen. We will be, we'll, we'll be dealing with this, how to discern and how to break these spirits. People of God, there are certain things which Jesus said, I have given you the power, you do it. Where the Bible says, when you bind, it will be bound in heaven. When you lose, it will be loose in heaven. So there are a few things that we need to do it. There are a few things when we need to pray. There are but few things that we need to practice, we need to do. So unless until we know what are the different kinds of spirits which has been mentioned in the Bible, let me tell you, these 15 spirits are enough. The moment we analyze these 15 spirits, this will be enough for us to, you know, this will be some, um, one among them will be in following us or we'll be stuck in that. Once we know how to break it, victory is ours. Family, people of God, God bless you and tune yourself for understanding the discerning different kinds of spirits and how we're going to deal with it. God bless you.